thank you for watching. <clears throat> These are my thoughts for members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. All others, feel free to watch this. <clears throat> if it was really important for non-members to not see this, I wouldn't put it out in this format. <clears throat> I believe members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints should not try to convince non-members of the Church to become Christians, who are not Christians, but not become members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. <clears throat> Here's what got me thinking about this subject. Um, there is a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints who I heard uh, give a brief summary of a conversation he had with a Jewish woman and he was said he asked her he quoted Isaiah 53 or asked her to read it or encouraged her to read it later and asked if she was ever going to become a Messianic Jew because of that verse and asked if she thought other Jews would become Messianic Jews because of that verse I wish I knew more details. I'm worried that he was being overbearing and rude. I'm sorry for those of you who we have been rude to or overbearing. I did that when I was a teenager. I don't think I've done that as an adult. Definitely haven't done that Have you know after I hit 30 something. The more mature I get, the less uh, overbearing I get. So it seemed like he was trying to convince her to become a Messianic Jew. That could be a whole video on its own, should they call themselves that. But not, so be a Messianic Jew would not be a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Would that help her? Would her going from being a Jew to a Messianic Jew get her something better after, after final judgment? No, it wouldn't. And that's why we should not be trying to convince people who are filling the blank with all the different religions of the world that are not Christian <clears throat> to just be a general Christian but not a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And here's my scriptural basis for saying that you're not going to get them anything, they're not getting anything better out of the final judgment <clears throat> just because they now say the right things about Jesus Christ, but they won't accept his church, his true prophets. <clears throat> Let's see. Starting, uh, Doctrine and Covenants 76 gives us the most detail about what will happen after final judgment and the places that people go to and what they did here and now on this earth to get there. Okay, so 76 starting at 51. They are they who received the testimony of Jesus and believed on his name and were baptized after the manner of his burial, being buried in the water in his name, and thus according to the commandment which he has given. <clears throat> that by keeping the commandments they might be washed and cleansed from all their sins and receive the Holy Spirit by the laying on of the hands of him who was, in, who was ordained and sealed unto this power and who overcome by faith, and are sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise, which the Father sheds forth upon all those who are just and true. They are they who are the church of the firstborn. And then, uh, let's see, verse 67 gives more details about those people. <clears throat> These are they who have come to an innumerable company of angels, and to the general assembly and church of Enoch, and of the first, uh, firstborn. Here we see those who get in the celestial kingdom. It's important. Church of the firstborn. That's not being just a Christian. That's being a member of the church of the firstborn. The church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And they, uh, they have to do these things by the ordinances. I mentioned the ordinances. The power ordained by those who receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. By those ordained to that power. The, talks about the Holy Spirit of Promise. That Holy Spirit of Promise does not happen outside of the ordinances, priesthood, power, and church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and the power of God. 
so if you get somebody to say Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies, that wasn't on that list. So they're not getting in. So they'll be just as well off if they're still a Sikh or an actual true Muslim, a Shia Muslim, or a Sunni Muslim. Yeah, Shia Muslims seem to have a stronger case to me in that debate between whether Shia or Sunni are the right understanding. <clears throat> okay, 71. <clears throat> and again we saw the terrestrial world, and behold, and lo, these are they who are of the terrestrial, whose glory differs from that of the church of the firstborn, who have received the fullness of the Father, even as that of the moon differs from the sun in the firmament. <clears throat> okay, then skip to 75. These are they who are honorable men of the earth, who are blinded by the craftiness of men. Alright, so, if you convince a Jew to become a Messianic Jew, or some other kind of Christian that's not the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, they are so blinded by the craftiness of men if they don't accept the fullness of the gospel. If they don't accept the prophets, the true prophets of God of our dispensation. If they don't accept the true prophets of God who were in the ancient Americas. In the heartland of North America is where I'm convinced by the evidence. <clears throat> um, and so it's not, it's not helping them. If you convince them of part of the gospel so that they're not a Taoist anymore, or not a believer or follower of Confucius anymore. <clears throat> let's see. So now let's read some more. Alright. And the glory of the Telestial. So this is the third, the bottom of the three degrees of glory. Of course, there's one other place that's not three degrees of glory, which will be extremely sparsely populated because to end up there, somebody must first have an extreme close relationship with God, knowledge of God, and then apostatize and then be murdering people. So, Spencer W. Kimball taught that no lay member of the Church or Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has enough knowledge to become a son of perdition to end up in outer darkness. And if a lay member doesn't, non-members definitely don't. And so that's why we very sparsely populated. Anyway, so on to the telestial. So the glory of the telestial is one, even as the glory of the stars is one. And as for one star differs from another star in glory, even so differs one from another in glory in the telestial world. For these are they who are of Paul, and of Apollos, and of Cephas. He's quoting names of true apostles from the New Testament. That sounds like a Christian, if they're of believing Paul was a true apostle and taught the truth. Cephas, that's of course a name for Peter. <clears throat> so these are they who claim Peter is teaching them or they're following Peter. And claim they're following Jesus Christ through Peter. Is it doing anything for them? No. The person you meet might be better off at final judgment, if they had been an atheist in this world, might be, than if they were a follower of Jesus Christ, only partway, follower of Jesus Christ, who would not become a member of the church of the firstborn. These are they who say, these are they who say, these are they who say they are some of one and some of another, some of Christ, and some of gospel. Neither the testament, and See, neither the testimony of Jesus, neither the prophets, neither the everlasting covenant. Okay, so they're not of the true prophets or the everlasting covenant. Last of all, these are they who will not be gathered with the saints to be caught up under the church of the firstborn and received into the cloud. Alright, so they were Christians that are... Some people in the telestial kingdom will be people who were Christians in this life. So you're not getting somebody to avoid the telestial kingdom if you convince them to be a Christian instead of a Wiccan, but not a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. They're still going somewhere other than the celestial kingdom.
<clears throat> so, now let's look at some New Testament verses, which buttress this point. We'll go to Luke 13.25. Luke 13.25. Okay, and once the master of the house is risen up, and hath shut to the door, and ye begin to stand without, and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us, and he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence you are. <clears throat> Let's see. And then shall ye begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in the presence, thy presence, and thou hast taught in our streets. And he shall say, I tell you, I know you not when ye are depart from me ye workers all ye workers of iniquity all right so here jesus is saying there are going to be people who think they're going to get in but they are not so somebody's just as well off being a follower of odin and a worshiper of odin somebody's just as well off at final judgment if they're a follower of odin a worshiper of odin as they are if they are only partly following jesus but not really going all the way into the church that is Jesus Christ's church. Let's look at some more uh, points from the New Testament. Matthew 25. Verse 40. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto... One of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say unto them on his left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, unto everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Let's see. Ta -da. And I wasn't hungered, and he gave me meat. I was thirsty, and he gave me no drink. I gave me no meat. And I was a stranger, ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in a prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee in hunger and in thirst, or stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison? And then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye did it not unto the least of these, ye did it not unto me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous unto life eternal. So this parable is obviously talking about people who were going to have a relationship with Jesus, or thought they did. <clears throat> And not people who just, you know, were completely anti-God or atheist or something, as far as I can tell. So there's an example. And now let's go to somewhere else in Matthew. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 7, and this is the last one. And... All right, Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 and 22 says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many shall say to me at that day, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not cast out devils in thy name? And in thy name done many wonderful works. All right, so those are Christians there. They did things in his name, the wonderful works. <clears throat> and then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Alright, <clears throat> so, Jesus is letting us know in those verses, some people who claim to be a Christian in this life, I now call you a Christian. Hey, it's up for God to make the judgment and tell you you're not. But he is going to tell some people they are not Christians <laughs> when they get to judgment day. And so it's not helpful to talk somebody out of being something that's not Christian into being a Christian if they're not going all the way into the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. One other related thought. <coughs> Kwaku L um, is our participant in the channel, which was named Three Mormons, which changed its name to Saints Unscripted, and he's got his own YouTube channel too, and he spreads the gospel on it. He does great work. I recommend you watch his videos. <coughs> he was... Um, Talking to... Who was the guest when he brought this up? Anyway. <clears throat> was he talking to somebody who's become an atheist? Yeah, somebody who became a member of church, atheist, back to member of the church. And he quoted somebody who said, 
Yeah, one problem that members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints have is we're so good at proving other religions wrong um, that when somebody decides to not be in the Church anymore, they can't go to those other religions which have been proven wrong, or at least proven wrong in the mind of a member of the Church who then leaves the Church, and atheism is like the only option for them. And they, the person he was quoting called it a problem. I don't see how that's a problem since... As I quoted here from the scriptures, um, still being a Christian or follower of Jesus, if you're not in the church, is not going to help you any. You might end up with a, an, a former atheist as a next door neighbor after final judgment. So thank you for watching. You have a good day. And members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, I think we should not be trying to talk people into being Christians if we're in, and not get them all the way into the church, because it's not helping them any. They'll get the same place after final judgment if they're a Christian who hasn't accepted the true and living prophets and the ordinances and the priesthood of the power of God. They'll end up in the same place as the, um, if they do that, if they don't accept that, as if they were still a Buddhist. You have a good day.